Well, stargazers have a chance to see a one in 50,000 year spectacle this weekend, a green comet making its way past Earth. Joining us live is Vanessa Moss, senior experimental researcher and astronomer at the CSIRO. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Firstly, when exactly is this happening? How can our viewers see the green comet? Is it visible from the naked eye or, or will we need a telescope? Yeah, hi Ash, uh, good to be here and talking about that. Um, so it's happening right now. Uh, actually, the comet's been visible for the last few weeks from the Northern Hemisphere, but it's been slowly making its way towards our skies. So now is kind of the first opportunity we have to glimpse it just above the Northern horizon. Um, so in terms of when we can see it, this is an evening thing. It's quite faint. Um, so basically you wanna be looking after the sunset, well after the sunset, but ideally before the moon rises, cause that causes a lot of scattered light and makes it harder. Uh, and and also because the comet's just sort of drawing like a little arc above the northern horizon, um, that means it sets by around midnight on the east coast. So, you know, there's there's a few things to balance. Um, dark skies are what you want to be ideally aiming for. So somewhere where there's a lot of light pollution is going to make it hard to see. It's um, it's not a super bright comet. So it's at the moment, it's very much at the limit of what we can see with our eyes unaided. So your best chance is using something like small binoculars and pointing in the right direction. Or if you have access to a telescope, that will help as well. Um, long exposures and phones or cameras with those sort of things will help. But yeah, so it's it's really exciting. Like you say, it's it's quite a rare occurrence and we'll, we may never see, well, we'll never see this comment again, no matter how long we wait. <laughs> Why is it green? Why does it look green? What gives the comet that color? Yeah, it's an interesting thing. It's actually something that's been an active topic of research. So even as recently as 2021, there was a study published that was looking at this green glow. Uh, and what the conclusion was that there's a lot of carbon in the head of tails. So there's diatomic carbon, so two carbons kind of hanging out together. Uh, and when that molecule is exposed to UV light from the sun, that can cause a chemical reaction, which makes it glow green for several days. So it's actually as the comet comes close to the sun, that triggers that and then, you know, there's the green glow. Again, this is really hard to see with your eyes. Uh, it's probably only long exposures that will be able to see it. But you will, if you if you get a, the right view, you'll be able to see this fuzzy patch and it'll probably be mostly glowing white. So just remind us, what exactly is the comet made up of? What What are we looking at? Yeah, it's uh, so, I mean, people often talk about them as dirty snowballs, which is kind of a very accurate representation. So they're ice and water. There's a lot of ice and water compared with something like an asteroid, which is mostly rock, iron, those sort of compositions. Uh, but there's stuff mixed in. So the comets are remnants of the early formation of our solar system, uh, back when everything was swirling around and condensing into planets, uh, then bits got left over. And so those are the comets that we see. Some of them are as close as, say, the, the Kuiper belt, which is just at the edge of our solar system. Some are further in the Oort cloud. There's even been comets known to come visit us from other star systems, so interstellar comets, which I think is super cool. Uh, those are quite rare. And most of the comets we ever see are from the remnants of our solar system's formation. So does that mean that a comet doesn't pose any risk to us here on Earth? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, if you think about it, anything that comes close to Earth that's a sizable body, that poses a risk. So that includes things like comets or asteroids or even space debris from our own satellites or things like that. Uh, and so it's really, it's about how much risk these things pose. Uh, the bigger something is, the more risk. The closer it is, the more risk. There was recently a news article that was, or lots of news about an asteroid that passed quite close. This asteroid was about the size of a minibus, which by space bodies is pretty small. Uh, and it came to about, I think it was 3,600 kilometers. So that's pretty close. That's like closer than a lot of our satellites orbit the Earth, right? But a minibus is quite small by these things. So if it had actually come closer and it was being studied a lot, so they knew it wouldn't. But if it had, it probably would have burnt up pretty easily in the atmosphere on that size. This comet is about a kilometer. So that's bigger. That's more risk. But it only came as close as 26 million miles, kilometers, <laughs> I forget which one it was, but you know, it's very far away. So there was no risk at all from this comet. And it's actually getting further away from us as time goes on. Um, it already had its closest approach. So I guess the, the key message is there's so much in the solar system to understand. There's so many like reasons that we need to understand our local universe that that's why there's a lot of surveys studying and cataloging near earth objects to understand anything that could pose a significant risk to us. Dr. Vanessa Moss, fascinating to hear your thoughts on that and you're giving us all really a good excuse to get out those binoculars perhaps this weekend. Really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you.